Okay, students, uh, welcome to the lesson starting in Chapter 10. So what we're going to be doing is kind of transitioning out of some of the theoretical part of trigonometry and a little bit more into the applications now. So going to be talking a lot about uh, getting back into triangle trigonometry. So the first thing we're going to look at is just some different types of triangles and some definitions and terminology. So basically a triangle with a right angle. We've already dealt with that. We call that a right triangle. But what we haven't talked about yet is a triangle without a right angle, and that's called an oblique triangle. Okay, so we're going to be dealing a lot in this section and some in the next couple of sections with oblique triangles. So that would be any triangle that does not have a right angle to it. Okay, one thing that you need to know is what you're given, because you're going to be solving triangle problems. In general, you're always going to be given three parts of a triangle, and then you'll use trigonometry to find the remaining three parts of the triangle. There's six parts. There's three angles and uh, three sides. So we're going to look at the different cases and just review that. The first one we call angle side angle, and all that means is you are given a angle, then a side, then an angle. So that side is between the two given angles. And of course, what you'd be doing is you would be finding those other three parts of the triangle right there. So you're given an angle, side, angle. Uh, the next one is angle, angle, side. And that just means you have an angle, another angle, and then a side in that order. Okay. So you can always kind of look at your triangles either clockwise or you can look at them counterclockwise. If you look at it this way, you could also say side angle angle. So side angle angle is really the same thing as angle angle side. Okay. Then the next thing we have is side side angle, which is kind of a special case. And this goes like this. You have two sides, and then you have an angle that's not between those two sides. Interesting to me that textbooks never call this ASS. <laughs> So it's always being politically correct here. We call this the side-side angle case. All right. Ask if you prefer, though. All right. The next thing we have is side-angle-side. And the side-angle-side case is when you would have a side and an angle on a side. So that angle is going to be in between those two sides like that. Okay. And then you would be finding, of course, the other side, and then the other two angles. Okay, you're given three parts, you're finding the other three. And then the last case that we'll be dealing with is side, 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 which of course just means that you're given all three sides, and ultimately you need to be able to use trigonometry to find those angles. Okay, so what we're going to be looking at first of all is the idea of the law of sines. And the law of sines we're going to be dealing with a special case and uh, talking about that a little bit. So this is the law of sines. If you have a triangle where the angles are alpha, beta, and gamma, then uh, again, we've already learned how to do this. The side opposite alpha, we're going to use a lowercase a. Opposite beta, we're going to use a lowercase b. And opposite gamma, the Greek letter gamma, we'll be using c. So the law of sines just says that if you take the sine of an angle and divide it by its side opposite, that will be the same as the sine of another angle over its side opposite and the side of another angle over its side opposite like that. And then you can write this also backwards with A over sine alpha, B over sine beta, C over sine alpha. So those ratios are always the same. Okay. So what I'm going to show you is we're going to do just sort of a demonstration on that, first of all. So what I would like you to do is let's just draw a triangle that we already know something about. Okay, let's keep it simple. and Let's say we have the 30-60 right triangle and see if we remember how that goes. So this is not an oblique triangle, but law of sines works in all triangles. So you may recall we learned that the sides can be uh, reduced to the ratio 1, 2, and square root of 3 like that. So I'm going to go around the triangle just 
um, label that. I'm going to say that's alpha, therefore that's A. I'm going to call this beta, therefore this is B. And I'll call this gamma. And gamma, sometimes I draw that wrong, kind of looks like, kind of like this sort of, kind of like a Y. And then we would have C like that. So I'm going to demonstrate this, basically, how this works. So what we would do is we could pick an angle, and we just pick its side opposite, and we formulate the ratio like this. We say the sine of 30 degrees over the side opposite 1, and that's going to be equal to this ratio. That will be equal to the sine of 60 degrees all over square root of 3. And then finally, that would be the same as the sine of 90 uh, over the side opposite, which is 2. So they're all going to be the same. I'm going to just do this on the calculator. We, we could also do this on the unit circle. But I'm going to uh, make sure my calculator is in degree mode. And I'm just going to demonstrate um, how this ratio works without really doing a proof or anything. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just put this on the calculator. I'm going to put sine of 30 and divide that by 1. Okay, and you get uh, 0.5. You may rec rec recall that on a unit circle, uh, the sine is 1 half. Okay, so anyway, this is going to give us 0 0.5. Then we'll do the same thing here. We'll do the sine of 60 degrees. And that's square root of 3 over 2, by the way. And then I'm going to divide that by the square root of 3. And that will give us also 0.5. And then you may recall that the sine of 90 is 1. So I'll just do this like this. The sine of 90 is actually 1. And if you divide that by 2, of course, you would get 0.5 again. So it's always the same when you do that. Okay? If I did this backwards, it still works. So I'm going to also show you that. Okay, I'm going to clear the screen and just do this like this for a minute. So if I did this like this, if I did 1 over sine of 30, okay, that will uh, end up giving me uh, 2. And then if I do the square root of 3 uh, over the sine of 60, that will also give me 2. And then finally, if I did um, the, the 2 divided by sine of 90, oh, come on, there we go, 2 divided by sine of 90, that will also give me 2, okay? So it works either way as to how you set up that proportion there, okay? So that's the law of signs and just a demonstration of how it works. You can use this to check the answer to any triangle, right? And one of the things I wanted to focus on this, the law of sines can be used if you know one angle the side and the side opposite the, the known angle and any other part of the triangle. If you don't have that, then you can't use law of sines. So you always have to have an angle and a side opposite and then any other part of the triangle in an oblique triangle to solve that then. So we're going to be using the law of sines to be solving triangles then. Okay, so this thing, is this magic? No, it's not magic, it's just math. Okay, so I want to show you kind of how this works. So if you looked at this triangle diagram right here, um, I'm going to run through a couple of things here and, and kind of show you how this goes. So if you were looking at this sine of A, the sine of A, remember, is the sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. So if you looked at this angle here, angle A, opposite is H, hypotenuse is B, so you would get basically the sine of A is equal to H over B. Then I could multiply both sides of this equation by B, and what that would give me is that would give you H equals B sine A. Okay? Well, I could also go like this too. Now I'm going to go back to this same triangle diagram. So if I did the sine of B, it would be opposite over hypotenuse, and hypotenuse is A here, so you would end up getting the sine of B is equal to H over A. 
And then if I multiplied both sides by a to get rid of that fraction, I would end up with h is equal to a sine b. Okay, like that. Okay, well, what I get then is these things are both equal to h. Okay, so this is the conclusion we get out of that. That just means we can set these things equal to each other. And if you have the equation a sine b equals b sine a, well, let me show you what happens. So what I could do is I could divide both sides of this equation by sine a to start with. I could actually do this, and I'm going to do this in two steps. So what I'd end up having is I would end up having a sine b over sine a is equal to b. Then what I'm going to do is multiply both sides by 1 over sine b. And what that would do is that would cross that out, and then that would give you a over sine a is equal to b over sine b. Okay, so that's the law of sines. You could recreate a different triangular diagram on that, and you could do the same thing for angle C. It'll still work the same way if you do that then, okay? So that's the way that that works out. That's kind of a, a derivation of part of the law of sines, okay? Law of sines is a real easy thing to remember, okay? All right, so what we're going to be getting into, mostly in this section, now we've kind of established what the law of sines is, we're going to be solving and finding the remaining parts of triangles in. Okay, so in this diagram, let's just kind of write down what we're given. We're given basically angle C is 112 degrees. And remember, the naming convention goes like this. If this is A, that's little a. If this is C, that's little c. If that's angle B, then that's side B like that. So what we're given in this problem is angle C. We're it given side B is 7 inches. And then we're also given side C is 10 inches. So what we're going to do is we need to find the remaining parts of the triangle. So we're going to find angle A and B. And we're also going to need to find side A. All right, so again, what we always want to look at, what I said, law of sines can always be used if you know an angle and a side opposite. So we have been given that, and we've been given another part of, the, of that triangle then, okay? So basically, here's what, here's what we're going to do then. And I'm going to just kind of go this way. We can start... Um, on this, you got to find a way to have three of the four unknowns. So what I would have to do on this is I'd have to do this. I could start with angle B and match it up with its side opposite. Then I could look at angle C and match it up with its side opposite. So you would have to start this problem by finding angle B. So I start like this. I'm going to say I usually always do it this way. I always put my unknown in the upper left-hand corner of my proportion. So I say sine B over 7 equals, and then I go to the angle, so I would say sine 112 degrees over the side like that. So again, I'm matching up the angle with the side opposite, the angle with the side opposite. Now notice this has one unknown in it, so we can solve this equation just by cross-multiplying, and then we can do this on our calculator. Okay, so the way I typically like to solve this equation is all you really got to do is multiply both sides by 7 to get rid of that uh, fraction. So you'd end up with sine B equals 7 times sine of 112 degrees all over 10. And then I need to go to my calculator then to do that then. Okay, all right, so you want to make sure that you're in degree mode when you do this. And this is going to go like this then. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just do sine or 7 sine of 112 degrees. Uh, close parentheses and divide by 10. And I'm going to write down whatever decimals I get. So I get the sine of beta or B is equal to 0 0.64902869829. And what you end up doing 
is you have to do the inverse sine. Anytime you're looking for an angle, you have to do the inverse sine of that expression. Now, you don't necessarily have to write all these decimals out, because in your calculator, the last calculation is stored in the ANS key. So what I can do is I can go second sign to get inverse to come out, and then I can either retype that, or I can go second negative to get that ANS. That basically is just storing the last calculation. So this will give the answer, and then we'll round this to one decimal. So angle B is going to be approximately 40.5 degrees. Okay, so that's the first answer to the problem then. Okay, so that's how we would do that. That's how we'd start the problem. Okay, now what we need to do is we need to find angle A. Okay, I'm going to kind of write in what we have. So that angle is now 40.5 degrees. Well, all of the angles add up to 180 degrees, so angle A is just going to be 180 degrees minus the 112 we were given minus the 40.5, .5, and this will give us approximately what angle A is. So we just use our calculator, take 180, that's the total sum of all the angles in any triangle, minus 112, minus 40.5, and then that will give us the, the angle. Okay, so we have got 27.5 degrees. So that is the second part of the problem. Then. So what we've done is we've got angle B, we've got angle A. That leaves us with side A then, okay? All right, so if we're going to do side A, we need to just go through and we need to do law of sines again. So now we know angle A we just found out that was 27.5, okay? So what I'm going to do is kind of match this up here a little bit, and I'm going to erase most of this stuff here because it's getting a little confusing to me. Okay, so what we're going to do is going to do this. So we're going to find side A, so that means we have to match it up with angle A, and then we got to match up this again. Okay, you always want to use what you were given in the problem if you possibly can. So remember, we just found angle A to be 27.5. Okay, so it goes like this. And when I set up my law of sines ratio, I always put the unknown in the upper left-hand corner. You don't have to do that. That's just what I do. So I would say A, the side, over the sine of that angle. You always do the sine of the angle. Then I'm going to match up the side 10. I've made a decision to put the sides on top. Divide by sine of 112 degrees like that. Okay? So what I need to do now is to solve this problem. I'm just solving for A. So all I really got to do is multiply both sides by sine of 27.5. And then go to my calculator. Okay? And that will give what A is. So A is going to be 10 times the sine of 27.5 degrees all over the sine of 112 degrees. And then I'm just going to go directly to my calculator. We'll round this off to one decimal. So I go 10 times the sine of 27.5. And then divide that by the sine of 112. And that'll give me the answer. I'm just going to round that side off to one decimal. So that's going to be, let's just say, 5.0 as an answer on that. Okay, so that'll be 5.0. And these were in inches. Okay, so that gives the three answers to that problem. And what I'm going to show you is... I'll show you kind of quickly how to check your answer on this because it's always real helpful to learn how to quickly use your calculator to check your answer. So let me show you kind of how we're going to do that now. I'm going to go back to my triangle and I'm just going to fill in everything that we know. And I'm going to erase some stuff here. We know everything now. So what we know is this angle is 27.5. We know this side is 5, and we knew, know this angle is 40.5. So those are the conclusions that we made. 
So this is what you would do on your calculator, okay? And it's real easy to tell you're right on this. What I'm going to do is just pick a side and form the ratio. So it doesn't matter which way you do this. I'm going to go like this. I'm going to go um, sine of 112 divided by 10 and just, you know, record that answer on the calculator. Then I'm going to go to the next thing. So I'm going to go like this. I'm going to go uh, the sine of that angle over its side. So I'm going to go sine 27.5, close parentheses, and then divide by 5, and just see if we're about the same. Okay, so we're pretty close to the same. We're accurate to at least a couple of decimals or three decimals, so that's pretty good. And then the last thing I'll do is I'll pick the other angle, uh, sine of 40.5, and then I'll divide by its opposite side, 7, and all these things should be relatively similar. They're off a little bit due to the rounding, but that will always give you a good idea of how to, how to check and verify these problems. So all these problems are 100% verifiable on the calculator, and I recommend that you certainly learn how to do that. Okay, so that would be the first example of law of sines. Again, we were given an angle and a side opposite and another part of the triangle. You can only use law of sines if you have an angle and a side opposite or have the ability to figure that out very quickly. Okay, all right, let's move to the next page. And here's another one. I'm going to do a few other illustrations of this. Okay. So let's just label what we have. This angle A, we don't know angle A. Uh, we do know angle C is 45 degrees. We also know angle B is 70 degrees. And it looks like, remember, the opposite of B is going to be little b. So we also know side B is 15 units. So we need to find A. We need to find side A and we need to find side C. So we're going to use the law of sines to do that then. Okay, step one. Again, what we're going to do is we just decide what we want to find. So what we have to have is we have to have a side and the angle opposite. Then we got to match another side up with another known part. So that would be the way you would pretty well have to start this problem out then. So again, I like to put the unknown in the upper left hand corner. So I'm going to say C over sine of 45 degrees is equal to B or 15 over the sine of 70 degrees like that. Okay, and then that will be the law of sines ratio that we can solve. So I need to get rid of sine 45. So I'm going to multiply both sides by sine 45 in order to isolate the C by itself. And then we go directly to the calculator. So C is 15 sine 45 all over sine of 70 degrees. And then we'll just round that off again to one decimal. Okay. All right. So let's put that in. We got 15 times the sine of 45. Be sure you close parentheses and then divide by sine of 70 degrees like that. All right, so that's how that goes in the calculator. And we'll just round that off again to one decimal. This one, we'd have to take the 9.9 .9 all the way up to 10.0. All right, so what we have is we have our first solution is we have side C is 10 units. And then that would get the first part of the problem solved for us then, okay? All right, I like to kind of write in these things as I go, so C is 10. All right, so second thing we can do is we can find angle A. We could have found angle A at the beginning of the problem too. So basically angle A is easy. We just do 180 degrees minus the other two angles, 45 degrees minus 70 degrees, and then that will give us angle A. Okay, so I'll do that on the calculator, 180 minus 45 and minus 70. And that'll give us that angle A, which is 65 degrees. Okay, so that gives the second part of the problem. So we have now got A 
and we got C. So that leaves us with side A. So to do side A, what I need to do is write in the angle I just got, 65 degrees, and then let's put together a ratio on this. So we'd have to go like this. If you're ready to find A, you would match A up with the opposite angle we now know, and then I would go with what you're given. I would match up side B with its side there. You could also match C up with 45. I usually just tell students to use what you were given because if you use something you found and made a mistake, then everything's going to be wrong. All right, so here's what we do. All right, set your proportion up. We're trying to find A, so we say A over sine 65 degrees equals, pick a side, I'm going to pick the side we were given, 15 over the sine of 70 degrees. Okay. All right, now we just multiply both sides by sine 65. That's one of the reasons I like to just put my unknown in the upper left-hand corner. For me, it's just a little easier to solve. So I would end up with A equals 15 sine 65 degrees all over sine of 70 degrees. And then I'll go to my calculator. Okay, so real simple, degree mode, 15 sine 65 divided by sine 70, and let's see, then we'll round this off to one decimal. So let's round that off to about 14.5 units, and then that'll give the third answer to the problem. All right, so what we have is we have angle A was 65, and we also got side C, and we got side A. Okay, so we have everything that we need to know now. Okay, all right. So I'm going to do one more check on this and just kind of show you how we could do that now. So um, now you can do this in several different ways. I, I What I'm going to do is just kind of over here write down that we had C is 45 given, and we just found C to be 10. We had angle B was 70 degrees and we were given B was 15. We have angle A, we, that was, let's see, we found that to be 65 degrees, and then side A, we found that to be 14.5. So if you want to check your answer, just go like this. Now I'm going to do this different this time. I'm just going to pick a side, 10, divide by the sine of 45. Okay, you can do this backwards too if you want to. So that gives this. Then I'm going to go side 15 divided by sine of 70. Okay, like that. Uh, off a little bit. That's kind of interesting. Okay, I may have to check this then. 14.5 and divide by sine of 60. It just seems like that's off a little bit to me. Well, that's really seriously off. I'm going to double check a couple of things on this. It could be because of how I rounded, but it generally doesn't make that big of a, of a mistake. So I'm going to pause this and double check things real quick. Yeah, I think I just did. I must have typed something in my calculator wrong, and I didn't check that. Yeah, see, I didn't even put a division key there. <laughs> I'm going to erase this, and I hope you guys, if you caught that, I apologize for that. So what I did... <laughs> And I don't know, I do stuff like that, I just don't see good sometimes. So the result of this calculation was when you do 15 sine 45 over sine 70, that's going to round to 11.3. So that's what we should have got. Now that'll change things only slightly. Uh, angle A is still fine. Okay, angle A, uh, A we do 180 minus 45 minus 70, so that's 65, so that's definitely okay. But that will affect, uh, let's, let me make sure I did this okay now. So I have A over sine 65, that's good. I think that should be good right there. Okay, I think I just made that one mistake. So what I'm going to do is recheck and see if we're on the right track here now. So I got angle A, or side A, should have turned out to be, it looks like, or side C, 
turned out to be 11.3. So I put the wrong thing in there. Okay, so I make sure I got that right. Okay, B of 70 was given, 15. Those th things right down now should be right. Angle A is 65. That should be good. And let's double check that now. Okay, so I think everything's good now. I'm going to try that. Just be careful about how you put stuff in your calculator. And that's one of the reasons I like to check when I'm doing these videos and stuff, so make sure I didn't make a mistake. So I'm going to go like this. I'm going to go 11.3. Um, Divide by sine of 45. Get that answer. And then I'm going to do the next one, 15 divided by sine 70. See, there I go again. 15 divided by uh, sine 70. I have to click the mouse on everything on this computer. So that's better. Then I got 14.5 divided by, come on, sine 65. Let's see if this is better. Okay, yeah, that's way better. And that's typically what you get. You'll get things usually accurate within a couple of decimal places. All right, so let's do one more. And uh, this time, I didn't give you a triangle diagram, so I want you to be able to do this as well. So what you need to do is just draw a diagram on this, and it doesn't really have to be drawn to scale. So I'm just going to call this angle alpha, and I gave that as 20.6 degrees. I gave side A is 10.4 centimeters. I'm going to call this angle beta. So that would make this B 15.2 centimeters in. So that would mean that this would be gamma. I cannot draw a gamma worth of crap. Kind of looks like a Y. And then this would be C. Okay, so if we're going to start on this, this is kind of what you have to do. First of all, you have an angle and a side offset, so you have to use that. The only other thing you really could do is match that up with B. So we have to start this problem by finding B. So our ratio is going to go like this. Again, I'm going to do the sine of B in the upper left-hand corner, match that up with the, the side opposite. And be consistent, go to the angle you know, sine of 20.6, and then match that up with the known side opposite, and then that would be the equation that you saw. Right, so all we got to do on this is multiply both sides by 15.2, and I like to kind of squeeze that in like that. So what we would have is the sine of beta is equal to 15. 0.2 times the sine of 20.6 degrees all over 10.4. Okay, then I'm going to go to the calculator and just get those decimals. And I like to use every decimal that comes out on the calculator. Okay, all right, so let's put that in. I've got 15.25 sine 20.6. Close parentheses, divide by... 10.4. Okay, make sure I got everything in the calculator right. So that looks good. I'm going to write that down. So we have 0 0.515921647. Again, you need to do the inverse sign of that value. And you can use that ANS key to save you from having to write all this stuff out then. All right, so that's what I'm going to do is go second sign to get the inverse sign. Second negative to get A and S to come out, and then this will be the angle. We'll round that to 31.1 degrees. So that would be the first answer to our problem is that. Okay, I'm going to kind of pencil these in as I go. So that is 31.1. Okay, next calculation is, let's just go through and let's find the angle. Okay, so it's easy to find angle gamma. So gamma is going to be equal to 180 degrees minus the 20.6 degrees we were given minus the beta that we just found. So we do that simple calculation, and then that'll give us gamma. Okay, so 180 degrees minus 20.6 
minus 31.1. Round that off to one decimal. And that's going to give 128. That's approximately 128.3 degrees. And that'll give us the second part of the problem. All right. So again, I'm going to pencil these in as we go. So gamma is 128.3 now. Okay. The third thing we need to do, it looks like the only other thing we got to do now is find C. So I'm going to set up my proportion like this. I'm going to match C with the opposite angle. So we'll say sine of 128.3. I'm going to go back to what I was given. In this problem, I was given A and alpha. So I'm going to say 10.4 over sine of 20.6 degrees. Then I'll solve that equation. So all I need to do is multiply both sides, sine 128.3. And then get the calculator out, and then we'll round, and then we'll have the, the problem solved, okay, on the calculator. Okay, so let's get this in the calculator, and then I'm going to put you to work on some problems and see how we do. So 10.4 uh, times, uh, you can leave the times off on that, sine of 128.3. And then divide by... The sine of 20.6. Okay, and that'll give about, looks like, come on, that's not what I meant to do. Uh, 23, we'll say about 23.2. All right, then the problem should be solved. All right, that's it. All right, and of course, you could check that on the calculator. And to see if everything's right, I'm going to bypass that on this problem. And I'm going to let you all go ahead and start working on some problems with Law of Signs. I'm going to kind of look at the, the basics here. Okay, somehow this thing's not pasting the way I want it to. Let's try it like that. Come on, slide over there. Okay, all right. I'm going to go ahead and pause and let you do problem one and problem two on the next page. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's see if you got everything right. I've checked the answers and everything. So problem number one, you should have started by getting angle C is 50. Uh, side A would be 25.7 and side B would be 20. All right, so what I did, now you see you have to start, that's why I said on this one, you have to start by finding C first. So you had to find angle C, angle, or side A, and then side B, and that problem given this information. Okay, and the reason you have to do that is because at the beginning of the problem, you do not have a, a, a side and an angle opposite it. So... Remember, you always have to have an angle and a side opposite. So you have to start here getting at 50 degrees. Okay. Then what I did is I said, okay, this is side A. So I say A over sine 80 is equal to 20 over sine 50. Solve that equation on the calculator. You can see what I did there. Got 25.7. And then I finish with uh, finding B. So if you look at this, you say B over sine 50, then 20 over sine 50, so you get B is 20. Now one thing I wanted you to notice on this problem is, is this. Since these angles are equal, then so are the sides. Okay, so the sides opposite, both of those are 20. That's what we call an isosceles triangle. I don't know how to spell that. Isosceles triangle. That's not how you spell it. Okay, that just means that two sides are equal to each other. Okay. All right. So, and then I checked on here. I just kind of did, if you want to look at this, this is how I did the checking on this. Is I just did uh, the side over the angle like that. You can do that backwards also. They all turned out to be the same as you can see. 
Okay, I'll move to the next page. This is what you should have got on the next problem. So you should have got alpha is 45.8 degrees, angle beta is 106.9 degrees, and side B is 16.7 inches. Need to write the units on there, really. Okay, and that's it. So what I did on this, I started by drawing a triangle. So I was given gamma 27.3, I was given C, which is opposite gamma, is 8. I just decided to call this alpha and beta. So A is 12.5. And then what we had defined in this problem was alpha, beta, and side B. Okay. So I started this way. I did, now you could start with either B or A. It doesn't matter. I started with doing this. I did the sine of alpha over the 12.5 is equal to the sine of 27.3 over 8. So I started with this ratio. Uh, you can see how I solved the equation. I uh, had to do the inverse sine on the calculator and got 45.8. Okay, once I know two angles, then I can find the third by subtracting from 180. That's how I got the 106.9. And then over here, I matched up B with the sine of 106.9 and I matched up 8 with the sine of 27.3. Okay, I also checked the answer on the calculator to make sure that's right. You can always kind of do that, and you can look at my calculations over here if you want to. So I did the checking. Okay, again, took a side over the angle and a side over the sine of the angle on the opposite side and so forth. Okay, so that's how that goes. Students usually do quite well with law of signs when they learn it. Once you catch on to how to match up these ratios, it's pretty simple. Okay, but don't overlook, you know, how you can check and that kind of thing like that. So the second major part of this section, we're going to look at what we call the ambiguous case. And this is where it gets a little bit harder. So I'm going to close off this video and just do the basic law of signs. Then I'll do another video for the ambiguous case. So hopefully this gets you started.